to prepare the grave of my mamu. Mamu means maternal uncle. To light the ears around the same time. And then around Diwali time, uh, Christians, Roman Catholics would light candles within the same period. Anybody ever notice that? Yeah. As a child I did, but you ever thought as to why? Okay, so I covered that, right? Uh, so essentially Halloween occurs in autumn and Diwali occurs in autumn. So there's a common thing of change in season, which is very important, right? So often we look at festivals in the uh, in Orthodox Christianity and they tend to coincide with festivals in Hinduism. Uh, they happen too often together to be just mere coincidence. So Holi or Shivratri happens around Easter, which is the next uh, Tridome, which is uh, Good Friday, Easter Saturday and Sunday, which is the festival of spring in both religions. And uh, we also have now Diwali and Halloween in autumn. So we identify the phenomenon is essentially a change in season that brings about but the fact is that we all belong to religions that develop in temperate countries that have a significance with that change in season, but we live in a Trinidad, which is have a rainy and a, a dry season. So we cannot miss that point. So it's important to kind of remember that. Uh, both Diwali and Halloween also have something else in common. Anybody might want to suggest what it is? They both occur around the very, the very same astrological uh, event, which is... Uh, the darkest new moon in the year, right? Um, in Hinduism, we call it the Mahamavas, and it's quite interesting how both civilizations, one in the West and one in the East, look at this dark period of the year. Uh, the Western philosophy to Roman Catholicism look at it as celebrating death or remembering their loved ones which have passed, and the other from the East, which is Hinduism, looks at this same period as uh, efforts to... Uh, lighten the darkness so it's quite interesting that they celebrate the same event season change and astrological point but they look at it from different perspectives um they, it's not to say that one is better than the other but they are two quite uh, two unique ways of looking at the same event but more so we can see a common thread among human thought and goodwill that goes beyond religion this is so because we all are essentially celebrating the same thing. And truth be told, if we were to analyze our uh, way of life, daily way of life, uh, another term for our culture, there would be more in common than there would be differences that um, relate contextually to time, space, and environment. Um, we even see this phenomena in our unique Trinbegonia identity, despite having roots from different parts of the world. We evolve into one common identity within the time, space, environment context of one country and one nation. Despite our phenotypic differences, our day-to-day -day experience, also known as our culture, um, I share an experience. Many aspects of our social interaction from the food we eat, the pastimes in which we engage and enjoy, and the unique expressions of speech we use are all more similar than they are different. Unfortunately, such a visage of a masterpiece that is a tapestry and foundation of our identity has not found its way into our education system that is still formed on a colonial perspective that creates divisive ideologies at an unconscious level because it is not culturally sensitive enough to um, our unique but diverse identities. Apart from being all-inclusive in one's country, another aspect of a civilization is to look beyond itself into the foreign land where its diaspora has spread. Um, Transabago, uh, the people of Transabago have spread far and wide internationally such that elements of our culture, for example, food, music, song and dance, has spread to many regions all over the world such as Europe, Canada and the US. Whenever we see Notting Hill Carnival in London or a Trinity restaurant thriving in the US, in the era of social media, it gives us great pride to share it on our feed. It gives me great pleasure today to share the experience of the National Council of Indian Culture. So it's not Diwali Nagar, Diwali Nagar is a festival. The organization is the National Council of Indian Culture. Um, in this regard, 
The council had uh, this council was established to promote the unique culture of the Indian diaspora that was formed out of in the Indian indenture, Indian indentureship during the colonial period. Um, Indian indentured laborers were taken as cheap a cheap labor source a cheap source of labor to the erstwhile colonies of Trinidad, Guyana, Suriname, Jamaica, Belize, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Grenada, South Africa, Réunion, Seychelles, Mauritius, and Fiji. Just to name a few. Most of the recruits were taken from similar areas in India, and so similar forms of Indian culture were transplanted in all three in all these parts of the globe. Thus, what is Indo-Trinidadian culture much resembles Indo-Guyanese, indo surinamese and um, much of the culture of the colonial Indian diaspora. Just like Indo-Trinidadians have moved to Britain, um, its former colonial master and set up a life there, in the same way indo surinamese also moved to the Netherlands. And there exists a huge Indian diaspora of Dutch indo surinamese roots there. Many of my Trinidadian colleagues are quite amazed to discover that there exist Indo-Caribbean people just like themselves in the Netherlands. Example here. <laughs> uh, the National Council of Indian Culture as an organ organization has reached out to much of the international Indian diaspora for the sake of promotion of the unique culture of the Indian diaspora that has moved away and beyond Indian culture within India itself. The Diwali Nagar, a project of the NCIC, short for National Council of Indian Culture, has become the national main stage for the celebration of Diwali in Trinidad and Tobago. It is a nine-day festival celebrated at the NCIC Nagar in Chagonas, just prior to the national holiday of Diwali itself. The Diwali Nagar stage is just not a national stage for a showcase of the culture of the Indian diaspora, but an international one. Performers and participants from all parts of the globe come to participate and even compete in various aspects of uh, Indian culture, such as song, dance, and a beauty pageant. Today we are fortunate to have with us the winner of the 2018 Miss NCIC Diwali Nagar from the Netherlands, Miss Pratanji Rai, in our presence. It is my great pleasure having her here as testimony to the international cultural work of the NCIC. After that long thing, I'd like to end. Today, I would <laughs> like to end with a quote, which kind of sums up my entire, uh, what, I, what I said in this entire thing. Um, from my, one of my favorite authors, Amrit Rai, the great grandson of Prem Chan. Prem Chan is uh, the most renowned poet of the modern era, era of Hindustani. And uh, this quote is taken from a book written by Amit Rai, um, A House Divided, the Origin and Developments of the Hindi Language, and it goes. And I think this is very reflective of our nation, something we should always bear in mind. But on one hand, we, so the quote starts, but on one hand, we cannot forget that when divisive forces are at work, it is not difficult to change the whole look of a culture by the same expedient of underplaying those elements of a people that unite them with others and overplaying those that distinguish them. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to open the floor to Patanji just to give experience being uh, Miss Diwali Nagar 2018 and uh, also uh, spreading that aspect of Trinidad in Europe. Hello everyone, my name is Patanji Rai. Uh, I'm proud 